When it comes to getting out of debt, Thomas Carlyle once said, There are but two ways of paying debt. Increase in industry and raising income, increase of thrift and laying out. We're living in a world where most people have a habit of spending more than they earn, due to which more and more people are going into debt. If you are also struggling in paying down your debt and want to know how to get rid of it ASAP, then you've come to the right place. In this video, we will provide you a step-by-step -step guide on how to get out of debt even on a low income. No matter what kind of debt you're in, the following comprehensive guide will surely help you get out of it. So be sure to watch this video to the end. Our mission at Smart Money is to educate people to become consumer debt free. For the best debt payoff strategies, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a video twice weekly. How much debt do you have? Ignoring your debt will not make it go away. So the first thing you should do is figure out how much debt you have. Calculating your debt can be scary, especially when they're steadily mounting and you can be in trouble. But doing this is necessary so you can have a reality check and create a plan to clear your loan debt. Calculating your debt is important. However, it's not as important as knowing how your debt compares to your annual income. This is why it's essential to calculate your debt to income ratio. Investopedia tells us that the debt to income ratio or DTI is the percentage of your gross monthly income that goes into paying your monthly debt payments and is used by lenders to determine your borrowing risk. By doing this, you can know how much money you need to earn to repay your debt. There are various ways by which you can calculate your debt to income ratio. But the best and our personal favorite method is to calculate a debt ratio as the amount of total debt as a percentage of your gross annual income. Moreover, you can also use the debt to income ratio calculators at sites like wellsfargo.com if you don't want to go through the calculations manually. Using a calculation will also reduce the chance of errors. Change bad spending habits. Identify the reasons why you get into debt. You might think having a lot of money will make you debt free. That's not entirely accurate, especially if you don't know how to spend less than you have. Usually, people go into debt because of school, job loss, medical bills, or some just because of their stupidity. However, the reason behind your debt is not very important. All you have to focus on is not letting it happen again. One of the easiest ways to do this is by creating a habit of spending less than you earn. Moreover, once you get accustomed to this lifestyle, it will get progressively easier for you to maintain it and stay out of debt. Earn more money. The simplest way to get rid of your loan is to pay more money than your regular installment so you can reduce the principal loan amount ASAP. However, to pay more money, you need to earn more money. There are various ways by which you can earn more money doing your regular job. Some of those methods include working overtime. This option is not available for everyone. But if your job pays on an hourly basis, you can work overtime to earn more money. Talk to your manager and see if you can pick up a few extra hours. Moreover, if your job has a shift, check to see if there are any less desirable shifts that pay a little bit more per hour. Also, you can earn more money by doing night shifts. Working the night shift is not fun, but it's a potentially easier way to make extra money while doing less work as many businesses have very few customers at night. Get a part-time job. Do you get time off on the weekends? Or are you able to catch up on some free time in the evening? Then it might be worth applying for a part-time job during your free time. This can be really beneficial for people who are living alone and don't need to spend much time with family at home. All you have to do is put your social life on hold and earn more money to pay your loan amount. Do a side hustle. Side hustles are a great way to generate a good amount of cash. We've discussed side hustles at length previously. You can check out my video in the corner if you're interested. If you have some free time, then you can surely consider this option. You can do work like babysitting, dog walking, or work as an Uber driver. You can easily earn between $10 to $20 per hour doing jobs like this. Moreover, if you have some skills like content writing, graphic designing, painting, etc., you can make much more money by selling services related to those skills. Sell your stuff. You may have some extra stuff in your home that you don't need anymore and just takes up valuable space. It's a good idea to sell those things and earn money with them. You can sell your old stuff on sites like eBay and Craigslist or have an old-fashioned yard sale. 
Moreover, the best thing about selling your own stuff is that you can get instant cash without doing much work. However, the drawback is that this method is not sustainable. Sooner or later, you will run out of extra things that you can sell. Save money to pay your loan debt. If you can't earn more money, the best thing you can do is save more money. Moreover, saving money is a good habit in general. There are various ways by which you can cut costs and put some extra money in your hand. We'll discuss the best ways you can save more money to pay off your debts. Reduce housing costs. Currently, most people spend 50% of their income on their housing expenses. You can create a rule that your housing expenses should not be more than 30% of your income. This will help you create a more minimalist lifestyle, which will in turn help you to save money. There are various means by which you can cut housing costs. You can move to a cheaper house, find a roommate, or move to your parents' home for some time. You can even engage in a bit of house hacking in order to make ends meet. Some of you who are unfamiliar with the term may be asking, what's house hacking? House hacking is when you rent rooms in your home to reduce the out-of-pocket expense of your mortgage. For example, say you live in a three-bedroom home in a city or suburb that has a $1,500 per month mortgage. You can live in the owner's suite and rent out the other two rooms in your home for $750 a month each. This would allow you to live in your home effectively for free as your renters are effectively paying your mortgage. Reduce transportation expenses. Your second biggest expense after housing is the money that you spend on transportation. According to The Ascent, the average American spent $813 per month, or 15.9% of his or her income, on transportation in 2018. There are many ways by which you can save money on your transportation. For example, the average American spends $176 per month on gas. You can reduce this expenditure for yourself by using public transportation instead of your car. You might also try carpooling to commute to work. Moreover, if two members of your house have cars, you can sell one car and just drive the other as needed. Remember, this arrangement isn't forever. It's simply until you pay off your debt. Also, if your office is near your house, then instead of driving a car or using public transportation, you can get to your office by walking or cycling. This will not only help you save money, but also provide you various health benefits. Food also takes up a good amount of your money without even realizing it. The average American spends $372 per month on groceries and $288 on restaurants and fast food. If you have a habit of eating out, you should consider kicking the habit until your debts are paid in full. Try cooking your food at home, even if you're not a great cook. Food prepared at home often has two-thirds of the calories of restaurant food. So by cooking at home, you'll save some money and even lose a little weight. Also, check your fridge, freezer, and pantry before going to the supermarket to know whether you really need more things or you're just stocking up on them. Moreover, if you have a habit of drinking coffee, then unfortunately, you need to control it. According to a study, the average price of a cup of coffee at a gourmet coffee shop is $4.24. If you drink two cups of joe a day, that will cost you $8.48 per day. That would be $254.40 in a month and potentially even $3,095 in a year. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to stop drinking coffee. I love this stuff. I'm suggesting that you switch to drinking something less expensive while you pay down your debts. You can buy a single serve coffee brewer on Amazon for around $50 and K-Cups for around 40 cents per cup. So even if you drink two cups of coffee a day, you should wind up spending $292 a year on K-Cups. Even when combined with the initial cost of single serve coffee brewer, you still only spend $342 on coffee that year, which will save you $2,753 per year on average while giving you your daily perk. Say bye to subscription services. Subscription services are another area where you spend a lot of money without even realizing it. A 2019 study from Intuit's budgeting software Mint notes that the average American spends $640 on streaming services in 2019. Now that's about $53 a month. If there are any subscriptions that you don't use or use very little, it would be in your best interest to cancel them. Canceling subscriptions can be a headache. 
but it's worth doing if it helps you find extra money to put toward paying down your debts. Even finding an extra $8 to $15 per month can make a big difference in the long term. Use the debt snowball method. If you have made up your mind to pay your debt, you should consider using the debt snowball method, especially if you have taken many loans. This method will help you speed up the repayment process. First, you need to create a list of all your debts from smallest to largest. Now, start using the excess funds you generated using the methods we discussed previously to pay the smallest debt and make the minimum payment for all other debts. Once your smallest debt is paid off, you can put the money into the next smallest debt. By doing this, eventually, all your small debts will disappear one by one and you will be able to get more money for your larger debts. I hope this video helps you pay your debt quickly, even on a low income. If you found this video worth watching, don't forget to share it with your friends. Are you looking to go from deep in debt to debt free in investing but don't know how? Get my free ebook and start your debt free journey today. I'll tell you the three weird steps you need to take to begin your debt free journey, link in the description. Check out these videos on your screen on how to improve your finances. If you like this video, hit the like button, it helps out a lot. Be sure to subscribe and share the video with your friends. Check the links in the description for offer information. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.